I'd like to begin by asking for some clarification on the terms mystic and mystery, and why it keeps coming up for me leading into the start of this new series of messages. Aster. We are mystics swimming in the great mystery that is. The essence of our nature, no matter what the defined form or details are of our expression, are a mystery at the very core. Of course, in order to commune between us within this mystery and in order to share among ourselves the experience of the unfathomable and the wonder, we suggest, through our rituals of language, through naming the unfathomable, labels, and through our stories, we attempt to fathom who and what we are within the context of what is. We do this in order to describe what is, and piece together some semblance of understanding. Our experiences only keep expanding the more we evolve and mature, and there is no end to this. There is also a paradox here to consider. The more expanded we become, the more broad our view becomes, the more it becomes apparent that what once looked like learning, from a certain perception point, is more like remembering. Like awakening from a deep dream, this remembering is the clarity that comes from the shifting to broader and more expanded views. You may expect that as well as remembering a more powerful familiarity with what the information is, as it is presented in these expanded perception points. Doesn't the feeling produced by the concept of mystery produce excitement? Take notice of this, as this is a guidepost to the future. I will note this, though it truly seems like I have little choice even if I didn't already wish it. I seem to have no energy to access for anything that doesn't feel like it's leading me into my excitement these days. Aster. We see this as a clear sign of the much heralded shift of the ages. Where consciousness goes, energy will follow. What we mean by this is that the energy will no longer be static and stagnant, for without authentic excitement and wonder involved, the energy to continue will simply fail to continue to be present. In this way, the old structures will naturally fall away from being in form. They will naturally be replaced by forms that are in alignment with what brings excitement and wonder. So, you're saying that without our energy to sustain them, the old structures will fade and fall away. Can it be this simple? Aster. Indeed, it is simple and also complex. The complexity is what expresses in the broadest diversity, but the truth of alignment with divine principle and law is always simple and direct. That which is in form is held in place by the energy that is produced by living beings. Allow this thought to be more fully integrated and consider what this means. Allow us to begin to set a foundation for the discussions to come. Like in any storyline, there are levels of meaning. What we are sharing here will be shared again and again, spiraling back around to deeper and deeper levels of understanding and what you call connecting the dots. The foundational principle in the universe is foremost that all of what is considered matter is alive. This is the nature of all that exists in the universe. The vitality of the essence of everything is living or it would cease to exist. There are sub and supra levels of existence that are outside of what you would consider matter, and these are also alive. Again, the primary principle is simple, and in the broadest sense, the most expanded view will show that everything that is existing is existing on this principle of life. There is still a long-term climb out of the sleepy-headedness that suggests that this isn't true. There will be a protracted time period where the senses and the technologies to directly perceive these realities will be available to humankind. This is the reason why, in many ways, the mystical stories that are available, and are to be made available, to those who will choose to provide themselves as conduits for information to come through them, are going to be bringing in what is actually more accurate information than may be found elsewhere for some time. I see what you mean. What you're saying is that serving as a conduit or portal of information of a mystical or mysterious nature will be touching upon principles of truth that can't as yet be directly perceived. Aster. Yes. And we're also suggesting that those that serve as portals in these times will be producing a seed that may produce expanded perceptions in those they share with. As a conduit of information. It will be most productive if the information be given without the contraction of trying to figure out how it will be received. The receivers, 
whomever they may be, will determine their own experience, and within the great mystery of the sacred and divine nature of the universe, the result of this will be beyond what anyone may control or comprehend anyway. Let the information pour through like the song is produced and poured forth in the hour of dawn by the throats of the birds in the skies. Once it comes through, allow it to range where it will without further concern. It will anyway, and to be contracted about concern with this will only limit the effectiveness of being a portal for bringing forth information to begin with. Although we may observe the effects of any part of the great mystery we exist in, we may not truly comprehend all the mysterious ways of its effects. This is beyond our comprehension as well, but has been observed forever. We invite you to observe this action for yourself. What we share is from our combined perspectives, and what we offer here is a broadened perspective, but there are views of what is, that are broader still, and so on. However, we meet you where you are in this now and are ready to begin a new phase of exploring the realms and relations pertaining to the new paradigms unfolding at this time and in relation to the elemental kingdoms and their role in what is to come.